my guy. Okay, guys, this is Cody. He's my watchdog. He helps me with my channel, and he helps me take care of all the watches. Say hi to the camera, Cody. Yes, you read camera right there. Remember Cody the watchdog. He's a good boy. Okay. Today I'm going to do a three-month review of my Elegoo Mars. Elegoo, Elegoo, we'll call it an Elegoo. And I'm going to let you know whether or not it's been working very good for me, and uh, my thoughts, whether I would recommend this, and some of the tools and accessories that I've been using in the process of designing jewelry, printing, and castable resins, um, standard resins, and things like that, and some of the things that I've been using my printer for. So let's get started. I've had this printer for three months now and it's been working really good for me and one of the reasons I got it was because it's pretty inexpensive when I bought it I think it was uh, $259 right now it's I believe $279 on Amazon and I'll put a link below to all the products that I'm showing you here um, and there are Amazon affiliate products so anytime you buy anything from the links below I get a small commission it goes to help support this channel but uh, yeah, I've been using this printer for three months now, um, steady printing. I know some people print a whole lot of stuff. Uh, I tend to print uh, maybe once or twice a day. I don't print a lot of things, um, mostly to deal with uh, jewelry design. So I'm printing things like uh, custom rings for people, and I'm doing them in both standard and castable resins. And uh, the reason I do them in standard resins is because standard resins are a lot cheaper than is castable resins. Most of the castable resins cost anywhere from like $100 a bottle for 500 milliliters to um, as much as three, four, five hundred dollars $500 for five or even a thousand milliliters. So you have to be a little cautious as to how much resin you want to burn through because 500 milliliters is not a lot when you're talking about that much cost. But uh, what I've dis discovered using my Elegoo is that this thing prints right out of the box. It's fantastic. It came quick. I ordered it. Two days later I had it. Um, I love it. I don't do much maintenance to it other than what I'm cleaning. Uh, the, the lid's holding up perfect. I'm very cautious with things. So, you know, what, what I've done uh, or how I take care of my Elegoo is pretty simple. Uh, the castable resins need a, a nice uh, grippy surface. So your build plate here, uh, it comes very smooth. And what I did was I took some 60 grit sandpaper and I just scuffed it up very, very little. And that's just to let you know if you're going to do jewelry models with this and castable resins, um, it helps the castable resins stick to the build plate. And that has been immensely helpful for me. I had to do some tests with that to get to that point, but that's what I've discovered. My uh, resin tray, I know some of the uh, people on the, news, the users groups are starting to get the disposable resin trays. I, I don't know. I think if you take care of things, they'll last forever. <clears throat> so, you know, let me just say that every time I print, I spend about 10 or 12 minutes cleaning everything up completely. And I'm very cautious as to um, how I clean things and how much pressure I put on the FEP paper or FEP film. Um, I have had to change my FEP film twice. Once just because it was starting to get cloudy and scratched up and that happens over time. So you know if you're just getting into this you're going to want to know that. And the second time because I actually punctured a hole in it while I was putting it in and uh, I didn't realize that I put a little hole in it and it was uh, I had just a little bit of leakage coming out of here before I got to anything I discovered that and uh, I changed it again so this is actually my second FEP film that I put on here and really just maintaining this thing is very simple when I'm done and I've cleaned the, the resin uh, vat and I've cleaned off the build plate. I wipe this down with some paper toweling and some glass cleaner and it keeps this nice and clean. I always make sure that it's scratch free. Uh, it's always immaculately cleaned before I go on to do my next print. Uh, 
doesn't bother me. It's very easy to maintain. You will want to make sure that you have <clears throat> a good supply of, of gloves. And the reason you will need these gloves is because of any resin, whether it's the bio resins today that they're coming up with, or the standard UV resins, the castable resins, the regular resins, whatever they are, they are somewhat toxic to people. Some people have no effect on them. So, I mean, I have spilled resin on myself. I've actually gotten a lot of resin on my hand, and I've never had a problem, although I've cleaned it off real, real quick. Uh, but resin doesn't seem to bother me. Who knows why? Maybe it's because I have Italian oily skin, but it doesn't bother me. I haven't had a burn yet, but some people have had some serious problems with the resin. One of the other things that you want, other than gloves, if you have a problem with the smell of the resins, get yourself a good mask to put over your face so that the smell doesn't bother you. Some people can be really physically offended by uh, certain smells. Doesn't seem to bother me. And when the lid's on and this thing's printing, I don't even smell anything. Uh, the fan's running, it's not blowing resin throughout my workshop, so it doesn't bother me. But always keep gloves on hand. Uh, cleaning supplies. I clean with isopropyl alcohol. So I usually get, uh, I try to get 91% isopropyl alcohol. I buy this, you can buy this by the gallon, um, or if I need it in a pitch, I can go to the dollar store and just pick up, you know, about five or six bottles of this stuff. It, it holds up pretty well. You will need the isopropyl resin or isopropyl alcohol to clean the resin off your prints as well as uh, having these little buckets full of water. I keep one with just isopropyl alcohol and then one with warm water and I rinse these out every time I do a print. Then when I'm done with my prints, I throw my prints in the ultrasonic cleaner. Being a watchmaker and a jeweler, I have several ultrasonic cleaners so it makes sense that I would just make sure that all the resin came off and the best way to do that is with an ultrasonic cleaner. So. It's pretty simple, and this thing is very easy to use. The software that comes with it, uh, the slicing software that comes with it, couldn't be easier. And I've got some videos on my channel that walk you through, you know, of course I'm designing jewelry or other things like that, and I walk you through how to model the jewelry, uh, how to bring it into the slicer. You can go back and look at my channel under 3D printing or go to my website and check it out. Um, and it walks you through that step by step. The software that's built into here, once you put the memory stick in the back of the uh, printer into the USB port, you turn it on, um, it'll come up here and show you basically uh, level your bed, pour your resin in. Once everything's done, um, you can go to the print options. It's following the instructions in the user manual. <laughs> this thing couldn't be any simpler to use. It's gotten ridiculously easy. In the beginning, when I started doing uh, castings or casting designs in 3D printable material, uh, printers were expensive, resins were expensive. Uh, we used much more uh, waxy products than we do with some of these UV resins, so it was a little harder. Uh, we had more at that time more prone for printing errors. But this thing, you know, once you determine your printer settings for the certain resins you're going to use, and I have. I'm using the Yeti Cubic Castable Resin as well as the iFun Jewelry Cast Resin and they are different castable resins. This, this will print uh, each layer in about 22 seconds. This one needs about 34 seconds per layer. Um, so substantially longer if you're going to do jewelry design. If you're doing standard prints or when I do a model, uh, a prototype, I have to admit, you know, it's, I'm setting this for like six or seven seconds depending on what I'm using it for layer height, and they print relatively quick, and they print relatively perfect. So I've never had an issue there. The, uh, the other thing you want to keep on hand is a good supply of filters, and what I've discovered is that uh, I can get a hundred filters on Amazon, and it comes with this cute little funnel. Uh, whether they're going to use this or not, I tend to use a regular plastic funnel, but it comes with this. And these 100 filters are like $12. I'll put a link to these two uh, in the description below because they're worth it. Uh, always use a funnel. It helps support the filter as you pour your resin from your vat back into your bottle. One thing I do with any of the castable resins is when I'm pouring the resin into the vat, I actually use a filter 
in addition to that, and I pour the resin into the vat so that it's filtered, because going through the filter takes any debris out of my resin. And really the only one I've had a problem with has been the any cubic um, castable resins. They seem to have little bits of grit in them, I'm not sure why, but filtering those before it gets into my vat before I print uh, really makes my prints come out perfect. So keep that in mind. The Elegoo comes with all the tools you're going to need. It comes with the Allen wrench to tighten up your build plate. Uh, this pretty much tightens up here. You don't level this until it's all the way down. Um, read the instructions it walks you through, and I've done a, a quickie on that too. Go back and look at my video on that. Uh, so once you get this cleaned up and everything's, uh, you get your, your model off your build plate, throw it in the isopropyl alcohol, start cleaning everything. Um, get everything cleaned out perfectly. I've gone through my cleaning steps to get everything out of here and make sure that everything is resin free, there's, there's no drips or damage to anything, your prints are good, they're sitting in the isopropyl alcohol, you rinse it with water, throw them in ultrasound cleaner. Once I'm done with that, and usually 5, 10, 15 minutes in the ultrasound cleaner is enough to get any of the excess residue off from the uh, resin, then I take my pieces and I will UV cure them. Uh, UV curing. You're going to want a good UV cure light. Uh, I got this on Amazon a few weeks ago and have discovered that this is one of those uh, great nail curing UV cures that offers more than 90 seconds. This one actually has, uh, let's see if I can flip this over for you, this one actually has a, a stepper switch here. 120 seconds in the up position, 180 seconds in the lower position, and 30 minutes in the mid position. Basically, you turn it on, you press the timer, and it starts working. Uh, I'll turn that off for now. It's that simple. Now, with some of the standard resins, you might want to cure these for 10, 20 minutes. With the castable resins or softer resins, especially if you're going to do casting, you're going to want to cure these for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. The reason you would cure a castable resin longer is because you want to make sure that all the resin, since we print these solid, is cured and that there's no moisture left in the model itself. So keep that in mind because um, with casting in silver, gold, or platinum, we take these pieces, we stick them in a casting material. It's like plaster of Paris, a little different if you don't know. Um, <clears throat> and then that's put into a furnace where this part would be burned out or melted out and heated up to uh, you know anywhere from 700 degrees to 1500, 1700 degrees. So if there's moisture in your model, it'll explode and it will destroy the investment casting material that we use, which would destroy your casting and you don't want that to happen. So curing these longer is why I got this particular machine and I will put a link to this. It was only $22 and some change on Amazon, free shipping, two days, get that. Um, you will need lots and lots and lots of paper toweling. So make sure you get yourself a good supply of paper toweling. I get my at Walmart where it's cheaper. Uh, if it's on sale somewhere, I'll pick it up if I see it, like at the grocery store, buy one, get one or whatever. And I buy the half sheets, and I tend to take the half sheets, and I just cut them in half again because, not that I'm trying to be wasteful, but I don't need a full half sheet to clean up my mess. So I tend to use these little quarter sheets as much as possible. That works for me. Um, geez, I can't think of anything else. Uh, would I recommend this product? Absolutely. Compared to the original uh, Anycubic Photon, this has the one drive motor for the Z-axis and I usually take this and clean it once a week and re-grease it just to keep it smooth. Um, you don't have to do that, but I do. I'm, I'm anal about my equipment. I have a $30,000 laser printer that, or a laser welder that I use uh, and I, I'm, I'm meticulous about maintaining that as well as this, even though this was only $260. Right now, like I said, it's $280. I'm going to buy another one. Um, I'm getting to the point now where I'm spending enough time modeling jewelry, 
in CAD and then needing to print it. So it's always a good idea to go ahead and do that. Um, I'm investing in a new one. So that's my suggestion. Uh, yes, I would buy this in a heartbeat. If uh, you're a jeweler like me or a watchmaker like me, some of the models that I print are uh, obviously jewelry and uh, watch related. I make some specific holders when I'm working on like old antique or vintage watches where standard watch holders don't work and I have to take the movement apart. Um, I make custom rings when I'm making a watch for somebody and I need a custom insert that holds the movement into the case. I also do uh, a lot of jewelry designs, not just for my customers, but for my wholesale accounts. Um, other jewelers who hire me out to design stuff for them, and uh, pretty simple. I can just design it, send them the file. If they like it, then I print it, and I bring them the, the printable or castable piece, and they can show their customers. So <clears throat> I can print, you know, eight or ten items on this printer. But I think I'm going to get to the point now where I'm starting to see the benefit of being able to print a lot more, a lot quicker. Not all the time, but at least having another one would allow me to, if not use them both simultaneously, at least rotate them back and forth. Saves on wear and tear. One other thing that you'll have to be concerned with, there are some consumable parts in this printer. The UV display. That up. The UV display uh, may go bad over the course of between six and ten months. Some people have had them fail quicker, some people are still using the original ones. Uh, mine's original, obviously three months it's been holding up well. I still check it before I print just to make sure. Uh, the other consumable is the FEP paper, which is this clear film. And what I did was I purchased um, eight sheets of FEP film on Amazon. I'll put a link to this below. And uh, you can get this on eBay, Amazon. Uh, you can buy the Alagu fat paper from them. I think they'll ship some for free, or you could just buy it. Um, I think this was eleven dollars for eight sheets. It's holding up really well for me. Um, I've done some prints on with this particular paper, and it's not giving me any problems. Uh, holds up just as good. There's some tricks to changing the FEP film that uh, maybe I'll cover in a different video, but there's some videos on how to change your, your FEP film uh, out there on YouTube, so go ahead and look those up. Yes, buy this. This is a great printer. Like I said, the Anacubic Photon, uh, this has a single spindle. The Anacubic Photon, the original, has a dual motor spindle, which could allow the uh, build plate to get off the balance on the uh, or level of the Z-axis. And some people uh, in the beginning were complaining quite a bit about the Anycubic that uh, when it shipped everything was kind of loose. When I got this in, I would just double check everything was tight, everything worked perfect. I plugged it in, poured the resin in, printed the test prints, and within three hours everything was fantastic. I was, I was impressed. Um, I've worked on $10,000 machines and they don't work nearly as good as this. So yeah, these things are great and I would recommend buying it. I hope this video helps you, and if it does, give it a thumbs up, share it on social media. Um, the links for all these products that I've recommended here are in the description of below, as well as on my website, so you can check them out at myjewelrybench.com. Go to the 3D printing section, and uh, you can get stuff there. Um, again, those are all Amazon affiliate links, so there's no fee to you um, getting them from Amazon. At least you can send them back if you're not happy, if there's any problems, uh, and it doesn't cost you anything. I get a little commission and everybody's happy. Happy printing, guys. I hope you like your printer when it comes. Thanks.